are back with comedian David Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. All right, let's do this. So after the first session, we had a meeting with the shaman and the psychologist, and they just gave us some insights on what they saw during the first session. And the shaman said to me that she could see the medicine that I took 15 years ago. She means when I did the ayahuasca. She said, it's still in my system. She's like, because it's still in your system, you are able to connect on a pretty deep level with the plant. And I told her what I saw with the aliens and that. And she said, they're the protectors of the medicine. And I was like, well, they look like aliens to me. And the psychologist was like, you're forcing things. You're trying to force everything. Just let the medicine do its thing. But everyone in the session was like, our dosages were a little bit low. And that's also what the meeting was. It was a dosage check-in. What were we going to do for the second session? So they went through and everyone upped their dosage. And they said to me, what do you think? And I said, I'd like to have two glasses just straight away, please. And the psychologist spoke to the shaman and the shaman gave a hesitant nod, (laughs) a very hesitant nod, but she said, okay. And the psychologist said to me, okay, we're going to give you two glasses straight away tonight. So the night comes. And I've been thinking about it all day. I'm like, this is going to be the session. This is going to be hectic. I know, I could just feel it. So we do all the preparation for it. A few prayers. We get the perfume on our hands. We rub some dirt on our hands and over our body and stuff like that. Protecting us from the spirits, the evil spirits. And then we all go in our bed and it's time to drink the ayahuasca. The night before, they came around with shot glasses for everyone mine was a full shot glass there was like three quarters and half for other people and then last night they came around with shot glasses for everyone and a mug for me and i was looking at the mug and i'm like that is a very full mug it was about half full i swear to god it was more than two shots but Obviously, they wouldn't have given me more, but it definitely felt like more than two shots. It was a big glass, but I'm like, all right, that's what I'm here for. Let's do it. Let's see what needs to be seen. So I do the mug. I slam it back. And you could just tell this medicine was stronger. It was blacker. Down the bottom, there was like grainy bits of like leaf or like plant matter down the bottom. It just felt like the shaman had turned it up a notch. So I drink that and like the night before, I felt a little bit nauseous for a little while but was able to hold it down and then at about half an hour, 45 minutes, I'm like, oh no, the same thing is going to happen again tonight as it did last night. Like no effects at all after 45 minutes. In my head, I was even saying maybe I need a little bit more and then I stopped myself. I'm like, Look, whatever you've taken is enough tonight. Just let it do its thing. Just let it do its thing. So the hour comes around and that's when the doctors and everyone comes around, checks in on you and tells you to drink some water so you can begin purging. Oh yeah, the other thing I forgot, when the doctor, because it was the actual doctor that handed me my glass, she gave me a big smile and giggled. When she saw my, fa- <laughs> when she saw the look on my face, when she handed it to me, so I was like, "That's ominous." Anyway, the hour comes around, the doctor comes over for the check in and was like, "How are you feeling?" And I'm like, "Honestly, I don't feel anything." And she's like, "Would you like a cigarette?" And I'm like, "All right, grab me a cigarette." And these cigarettes aren't like your darts, normal darts. They're like fucking pure tobacco, no chemicals, no even nicotine in them. They're just beautiful. They taste delicious. So she comes back with the cigarette. I start smoking the cigarette. And then the shaman starts the prayers, starts the fucking chanting. And as soon as she started the chanting, it was like she turned the switch on or something. Everything started coming on. And it started coming on quick. And it started coming on heavy. 
So I was like, all right, I need to drink some water and do some purging before this really takes off. So I start smashing, chugging water and trying to purge, trying to throw it up and just nothing, just... And so I'm like, all right, more water. And I scull a heap more water. And it's really coming on now. Like it's almost getting to the point where I can't even grab the bottle and drink more water. But I need to purge. In my head, I'm like, I need to get this out. So I just forcefully keep trying to drink some water. And I'm just not able to purge. It's just like, like choking almost. And it felt like the medicine was saying, no, you're not using the same trick as last night. You're not in control of anything here. This isn't going to be the same as last night. And so I fucking drank a little bit more water and tried to get something out and just same again, choking. So, And now it's on, like it's on. And I've got all this water sitting in my belly and all this ayahuasca And it's just in the center of my belly, but I can't purge it. And I'm almost overwhelmed by how intense the situation already is. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be able to purge. I need to lie down. So I start lying down and it's just on me, on me. Like the intensity was just insane. And I'm like, this is only just the beginning because the shaman who's doing the chants is only at the first person. She just started doing the first person. And last night she did everyone and <laughs> and it took fucking forever for her to get through everyone the night before. And she's just at the start of the first person And I'm already in so fucking deep. So that's going through my head. And I'm like, I'm in big, big fucking trouble here. We're like 10 minutes in. Like 10 minutes into the actual psychological part. And I am in all sorts. So I'm I'm fully lying down and I'm just clinging on. Everything is going through my head. I'm like, we're 10 minutes in. There's another three and a half fucking hours to go. This is only the beginning. And I'm like, well, there's the antipsychotic drugs. I can take them. If this gets too much, I can just go take them. And I'm like 15, 20 minutes in now and I'm starting to spiral. It's just so fucking intense. Like this is stage one and already... You can take all my other life experiences I've ever had ever, combine them all together and times it by a million. And that's what I'm like 20 minutes in. And I'm just sitting with it and I'm just trying to fucking get my shit together. I'm just trying to get it together. And I'm just breathing and I'm concentrating and I'm trying to kick out all the bad shit, all the negative shit. Just get some sort of like balance. and. I fucking start calming down. I start adapting to this level. And eventually, I'm not too sure how long it took, but eventually in that space, I was able to become comfortable. And so I spent some time in this, like, you have no fucking idea. The intensity is just insane and what's going on is insane but I was able to begin to feel comfortable and enjoy it. And then once I got comfortable in that level, it was like, all right, it's time to go to the next level. And they just fucking turn the volume up. And it's not like the next level. It's like exponentially fucking heavier. Now I'm back where I was on the level before. I am fucking battling, just fucking clinging on. But you can't even cling on. You've got to let go. You can't fight this. This is too powerful. So you're just letting go, letting go. And the intensity is just like out of this world. And I was still able to think about the antipsychotic. I'm like, "Uh, at least I can take that. That will take me out of this. And then I'm like, no, I'm here for this. This is what I'm here for. Just 
try, keep trying, let go, let go. Love, 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 just anything I could fucking do. But it's like tearing you fucking apart. And then I fucking was able to clear all the shit, all the negative shit. And I was able to adapt to that level. And then I was sitting in this space where it's like, I'm no longer a human being. I am some sort of like spirit or some something. And then the shaman comes over to me and you're meant to sit up. If you're lying down, you're meant to sit up and uh, give the shaman respect and have, your, and have your hands held open and they do the prayers for you and they see what you need. And then it just goes to another level. The shaman is singing and chanting and I'm just holding on, holding on again just for fucking dear life. And then I was just like, concentrate, concentrate on the shaman. Let her do her work. She's the healer. And when I could concentrate on the shaman, I calmed down. I really, I could get into it. I could sit there as a astral fucking spirit being that's like vibrating at whatever, (laughs) whatever fucking intensity that was. And so I'm sitting there and I begin enjoying this and I'm like really liking it and I'm laughing and I'm having a little bit of fun with the shaman and then the shaman finishes and moves on to the next person and then I move on to the next stage. I just collapse down like lying down and next level. The intensity just ramps up again just to a degree that is undescribable. And it keeps doing this. I go through this like three more levels after this, the same thing, just a continual process of fear and letting go. And I kept progressing through these levels. And then finally, I get to the top level. And the intensity there was beyond, beyond. And there, when I got to that level, it was time to die. That's what it was. I got to the stage where I had begun the death process and there was nothing left. It was now time for me to die. And so I had begun the death process and my guardian death angel came to guide me to my death. I knew as soon as I saw her, she was there to take me to my death. I even said it. I'm like, I'm going to die now, aren't I? And she just kept on telling me, come, come. And so I was going through the stages, the process of dying and the intensity of it was just unfucking describable It made all the stages previous to it seem like a fucking cakewalk. So I'm heading towards my death and it just gets more and more intense and you have to let go more and more. And I get there. I get right to the edge of death. I'm right there. I'm ready. I'm ready to go to. I'm ready to die. But I need to let go. And I'm right there. I've gone through the whole entire death process and I'm right at the threshold and all I need to do is let go. And the intensity, it's like standing on the surface of this. No, it's it's like being on the event horizon of a black hole. That's the only way I can describe it. Not that it was black or anything like that. That's the only way analogy I can use. So I'm on the threshold. And all I need to do is let go. But the thing is, you actually have to die. It's not an experience where you're like, oh, this will be cool at the end of it. Dying will be cool tomorrow when I think about it. No, every single fiber of your being, every cell, you, everything, you have to die. And you have to let yourself die. You have to let go. You have to consciously 
die. And that's the greatest, greatest gift in the universe. And I was trying, I was trying to let go. I was trying to finish the process. But I just kept on clinging, clinging to life, clinging to being a human being. I just couldn't cross that threshold. I couldn't go. I just couldn't take the final step, the final act. And the universe and the angels and my guardian angel and the whole energy of the whole universe is just saying, let go, come. And I'm on the threshold. I'm at the last, last stage of death. And I just couldn't fucking do it. And it wasn't through a lack of courage or bravery. Courage and bravery will only get you so far. That final act, the act of dying, that final act is an act of love. It's not courage. It's not anything. It's love. Death is the ultimate act of love. Death and love are the same thing. That final act is an act of love. And I hadn't practiced love enough. I hadn't immersed myself in love enough to go through with that final step. I stayed there for so long. I was trying so fucking hard, but I just couldn't let go. And in the end, I guess it became a choice between being a god or human and I chose human and I always thought when it came to it when it came to that moment that moment of truth and this was the ultimate moment of truth I always thought that I would be the guy to cross the threshold but I'm not all the delusion I ever had of grandeur or of godlike qualities completely completely left me i came face to face with my moment and i couldn't do it and i was absolutely distraught once i'd missed my opportunity to truly die to commit the ultimate act of love i was inconsolable and i'm talking about death here like proper death you've got to let go of everything your body, your mind, your soul, your family, friends, the future, the past, everything. You've got to let go of everything. That's why it's the ultimate act of love. Because to let go like that, you have to love. You have to love. And so I got pulled away from the event horizon and I got taken back and I was distraught. I was like, no, take me back. I'm ready now. I'm ready. And I tried to go back and I got close. And then right at the last, I would fucking still be clinging on, clinging on to life or human or something. I just couldn't release. I couldn't let go that final act. And so it was still, the intensity was still insane for like the next hour and a half. And then I went through some fucking purging and there were some other stages, but I just couldn't get over the fact that I'd missed my chance. And earlier that day, during the love meditation in that, the lady who was uh, the instructor, she was like, good luck with the experience tonight to everyone. And she's like, if you get the gift of the death experience, try to let go, try to let go because that's the greatest experience in the universe and you only ever get it once in your life. I've never heard of anyone who's had the death experience and has not gone through with it and been able to get it back. So I'm just sitting there going, I've missed my opportunity to become one of the gods because not everyone gets the death opportunity either. And I was just like, fuck. Maybe this was it. Maybe this was the point that I'd spent however many lifetimes and trillions of years and, and consciousnesses. Maybe that was the point. 
and I failed the test. The ultimate test and I failed. And then I was like, I'm not a god. I'm a human. I chose to be human. And that's good. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy who can stand on the surface of the sun and reach the center. And it was freeing. I'm like, I'm just human. And I was like, I'm going to be the best human I can be. Now that's the decision I've made. I'll be the best human I can be. And then I just kept on thinking, I know what it is now. I know what it takes to cross that threshold, to die, to commit the ultimate act of love. And it's not something you can do on a whim unless you've carried through some like karmic energy and know some shit in previous lives or something like that. And the first thing I thought is I'm going to study everything I can about the death process. So when it comes time again, when it comes time for my actual death, that I'll be able to die in the right way. Because I might not get an opportunity to go through that experience again, but I will have the opportunity to die someday and I will be prepared for that. So afterwards, I was just, I was so happy. I was so happy for the opportunity to get to see all that. I was proud of myself for even getting to the fucking threshold. I think that's part of why I was clinging on still. I still had some ego left or something like that. But I was proud of that and I was fucking happy. And I was just like, this is exactly what I came here for. I failed the test, but I'm happy I did the test. I'm happy to be human. It was like I was reborn as a human. It was so fucking amazing. Imagine that, being reborn as a human. It crushed any delusions of anything I had. It humbled me more than anything's humbled me in my entire life. And then afterwards, I had to speak to the shaman like immediately afterwards because I wanted to ask her a few questions. I told her I'd missed my opportunity to die. And she's like, you took too much. (laughs) She's like, you took way too much. She's like, you skipped many of the steps. You're not meant to go straight to that step. And I was like, I needed to know. I needed to know if I could or not. And knowing that I can't, to me, is just as good as knowing I can. And so that is it. Over the next like few days or weeks or something, I'll uh, continue to talk about the things that I can remember, little bits and pieces. But that was the main event. That was the test. I was put to the fire. I don't feel like I need to do anything ever again. I got all the answers that I ever needed. And I think I got what I asked for as well because the prayer I said to the medicine before I took it was, show me how to be the light that can guide people out of the darkness and show me how I can be redeemed. And I think the fact that I failed is going to be more helpful to people than if I had crossed the threshold. But now I know it would take me 20, 30, 40 years, maybe fucking a lifetime, maybe 20 lifetimes to learn what's needed to learn to let go, that final act of love. It was an incredible experience. And so, the boy Al has been reborn as a human being, and I could not be happier. So, that'll do it for today, and I'll see you the fuck later. Peace.